Sally Parks. I'm with the Palm Harbor Historical Society, the Palm Harbor Museum, and I'm very fortunate to be here today with Bob Noel. Bob, tell me what your full name is and why were you named that? My full name is Robert Earl Noel, and uh, my father's name was Robert Marshall Noel, but there was one ahead of me that didn't make it, and so I was, am not a junior. Mm -hmm. So I was named after an earl, and I don't know who that earl is. I see. Okay. And what <laughs> year were you born? When's your birthday? I was born March 19th, 1934. I was born in the Virginia mountains on Lone Pine Mountain out of Bedford, Virginia. Mm -hmm. And um, born in a house that all of the floor wasn't even in the house, and it was cold in the wintertime, but they went there to have me at my father's brother's house. And um, and that's, uh, that's where my cousins and all live now in that area in Virginia. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of home to you in a sense. Well, it's uh, it's where my all my relatives live, you right, know, on my right. father's side. So why did your parents go there to have you born there? Was they were on the road then? Yes, my mother and father both uh, traveled. They both were like performers. Uh, my mother did a lot of uh, sketching on paper of things that were very amusing. They could take a make a head and turn it upside down on paper and it would be a different head. This, instead of smiling, it would be frowning or something. And she did a number of those. My father was a ventriloquist. My father was also a blackface comedian. My father sold medicine. He put on a free show to get a crowd to sell medicine in the early days, in the earlier days. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, actually before I was born and then after I was born too. I don't remember a lot about the medicine shows. I do remember when they sold later on some medicines, mm -hmm. but... Uh, what kind of medicines did they sell? The same medicines you buy now in the drugstore, that was, most of them came out of Chicago. <clears throat> they didn't have television to advertise things. They didn't, they, they did have some radio programs that advertised them. And uh, medicine show people would take them out and uh, and give their spiel about them. And some of them were pretty good. They had some oils and liniments and and that, that, were, that were good. They had some salves that were excellent for, for, for healing and such. Mm -hmm. Bob, you, you mentioned your father was a blackface comedian. Tell me what that means. Well, um, you take burnt cork out of Coke bottle caps and you burn it and it turns black. Mix a little water with it and, and, it, and, you, and it's black. It's black, black, black. Blackface comedian was, uh, was comedy shows. And uh, very popular, I would say, in the 30s, uh, most likely 1890s to the 30s. I don't know how far it goes back. It may go back further than that. But uh, they had a lot of different skits they did that was, uh, that was entertaining to, to, uh, to, to both audiences. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, had, uh, we had a rope down the middle of the audience and white on one side and colored on the other. And when they went in to see the show, the show was in the middle and they it was white on one side, color on the other. Because almost all of the little towns we played, there was uh, close to a 50-50 mix. Mm -hmm. So they were segregated audiences. That's right, yes, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, yeah, it was a different time, wasn't that's it? That's a different time. And, and everybody enjoyed the show, but as time went on, somebody said something one night about the little blackface uh, dummy, Sambo, little black Sambo. And uh, so Daddy put the dummy away and never used him anymore. That was in a little town in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. so. Do you remember your grandparents? My, uh, I never saw my uh, father's parents, mm -hmm. but my mother's parents were show people. Mm -hmm. Now the man that raised my father was a showman. Mm -hmm. A, a, a traveling magician, one man, horse and buggy show, medicine show salesman, came to Syfax, Virginia, which was a one-store town, and put a show on, and Daddy got permission from my grandfather, his daddy, to go with Doc. He left and stayed in the business all of his life, and now we're like seven generations in the amusement industry. Wow. Um, and he married my uh, mother when he was about 20 years old, and um, and my mother's father was also a blackface comedian and also a ventriloquist. Mm -hmm. And her mother performed. She played a zither, 
and uh, and I don't I never saw her routine so I don't know exactly what she did but I, I have seen my grandfather on my mother's side um, blackface show yeah and did they travel like your family did too yes they but they traveled they traveled by train and went to uh, little little towns and the either be in a schoolhouse room or a church or a, or some lot little hall that they put on their show and um, and not many people but didn't take many people it was it was uh, in the early 30s you know and uh, it wasn't it wasn't uh, as much money around as there is today mm -hmm. although it's shortening up now <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little bit about that you have a sibling a, a sister I have two I have I have a sister, and I have two sons, and uh, one son lives about less than a mile from here. The other one lives in the old home place in Clearwater, which is ten miles from here. Mm -hmm. And uh, Robert, my oldest son, has a boy and a girl, actually a girl and a boy. Jenny he runs a Treasure Island Fun Center, which is on um, on Missouri turns into Seminole. Boulevard and it's on Seminole Boulevard on the right hand side of Treasure Island Fun Center. It was moved from Treasure Island over there. My son bought that piece of property and moved it over to to the mainland. And it's been very successful on the mainland. So still in still in the amusement business. Yep, still in the amusement business. That's right. right. Yep. Right. My youngest son makes games too and sells merchandise to my oldest son. My oldest son has Walmart stores, the games and the vestibules. I see. So like the claw games and right. things like that. Yes, yeah. it's a pretty big business. It's yeah. it's a uh, it's pretty big business. He's got, I'm sure it is. I don't know how many, but it's over 500 stores. Wow, Bob, what was it like traveling around from town to town? You know, you lived a very untraditional childhood. Yes, I did. You didn't live in one home for all of your childhood, or even maybe two or three or four homes, but in the no. same town. It's funny, I uh, I went to school a week in each place, and uh, when I'd go to school... A week? A week. Is that what you said? A week. Okay. A week. One week. Wow. <laughs> now, the first day in school, <laughs> they say, you you were that you were that little show. Yes, I was that little show. Well, what do you do? Well, the first day is... Um, telling stories and such as that up before the head of the class and um, and I'd tell stories like you know out in, when we we're out in Texas if you're in if you're in the south people don't know what it's like in Texas they didn't know armadillos is new to Florida it, they only came along about 30 years ago, 20 years ago you know they, mm -hmm. they worked their way around and I'd tell them about the armadillos and I'd tell them about the wolves and I'd tell them about the uh, coyotes you could hear howling at night which I, I didn't see many wolves but I but I heard the coyotes a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, then if you were someplace else, like on up in North Carolina, you'd tell about the alligators down in Florida. And, mm -hmm. and, and so then they liked what I told so well that day two <laughs> and day three and day four <laughs> and day five was in other classes telling my story. <laughs> and it was, the same, it was the same in every school. It was the same in every school. That's amazing. And, so uh, what did you learn in the process? I didn't learn a whole lot. <laughs> I, uh, no, no, I didn't learn a whole lot. I went to some schools, dirt roads, school buses. I went to one school, and I don't remember where it was at. It was in the coast of North Carolina that must have had over 50 buses. Well, you get kind of confused when you <laughs> when you when you don't know, oh, you know, you come cabbage. out. you got to get one of those buses going to where you want to go, you know. But um, actually, I went to that same school three different weeks from different directions because they they had tentacles going out with them school buses all around it. Mm -hmm. And as we showed little towns around, mm -hmm. went to the, back to the same there school. There you were at the same yeah. school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was riding in a school bus one day. They were little buses. They weren't too big. Um, and it had seats on the sides, but it had a row of boards down the center that you sit on. And I was sitting on the front of the board, and some of the school bus drivers were young, and they were, you know, they were, the kids would say, do a wheelie or something, you know, or like spin around in the dirt in the middle of the X crossroad, you know, and, and uh, but this one driver was running along and hit a thing, it must have fell off of a, a log truck, and it would, had a limb on it, and when he run over it, 
the board came through the boards right between my legs oh. and came up about that far. Oh and uh, I'm glad I wasn't sitting yeah. a little closer to the really? front, you know. I was sitting on the end of the board. It came right up through the floorboard. Oh, my gosh. And, uh, you were I remember fortunate. one time we was following another school bus. And the roads were real close to the front steps on houses. They built the houses, or they built the road, right against the front of the house. And there's always chickens around them houses. And I saw the chicken run, and I saw one get run over by the back wheels. Squish that chicken. That was that's a memorable that's a memorable moment, you know. I mean, yes. uh, of course, they didn't mean to run over the chickens, but the chicken was under the wheels mm -hmm. of the bus, right in mm -hmm. front of them, under the school bus. Um, I had a lot of experiences on them school buses. It was pretty. Oh. <laughs> I come in Virginia one time. We was on a mountain road, and the bus slid in the curve, and it's a long ways down over there, and he had to back up a little bit to get the front wheel from slipping over the, over the mountain, you know, on the mm -hmm. icy road, a sleet mm -hmm. road. Mm -hmm. But that, that was up in, in, in uh, Bedford County, Virginia, where I, where I was born at. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Bob, tell me a little bit about where you lived. I mean, did you, did you, when you were traveling, did you stay in motels and hotels? No, or? we always had something to stay in. We always had a, we always had, since I can remember, we always had a trailer, mm -hmm. some type of a trailer. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, in the early days, there wasn't much of a trailer. Um, but as time went on, they got better. And I, a little bigger, I assume. A little, a little better, a little better, mm -hmm. a little better living conditions. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember when 1946, Daddy bought a new Spartan trailer after the war. And in 46, you couldn't buy a lot of things, so he got this new Spartan trailer, and there was a place in it for a refrigerator and a place for a stove. But you couldn't buy a stove or a refrigerator at the time. <laughs> So they used the ice box for a while, and then finally they was able to, at the stores, had a refrigerator mm -hmm. you could mm -hmm. put in there, see, mm -hmm. and then a stove. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, uh, and they didn't usually have a bathroom. You had a bucket, you know, mm -hmm. didn't have a bathroom mm -hmm. in, in the early ones. Mm -hmm. um, but so these trailers were small, maybe 10 feet long, something like no, that? No, the Spartan was about... 26, 28 feet oh, long, the Spartan size. was. Right. Now, earlier right on, here, they yeah, were only about only 10 or 12 feet long, mm -hmm. earlier on. Mm -hmm. You know, Daddy had one that I don't remember, but Mama told me about it, that that had a wooden tongue, and, uh, and she had bought too many canned goods and stuff to put in the trailer, and they was trying to go up the Tennessee mountain over there and uh, on a dirt road, and they couldn't make it. And Mama had to throw out the canned goods. <laughs> It was like a Lucille Ball, long, <laughs> long trailer. I don't know if you remember that movie yes, or not. Yes, collecting throwing the rocks. rocks uh -huh. Yeah, well, so Mama was out there helping push the car in a trailer, trying to get it up this dirt road on in this, you know, in them, some of them Tennessee and Kentucky hills. Right. So what kind of cars did your dad have to pull these trailers? Or were they trucks or No, cars? later on they were trucks, but uh, earlier on... Uh, I remember he had uh, he had a Dodge. I think the pictures in the book there's a Dodge, and uh, they're all square cars, you know, mm -hmm. old square cars. Mm -hmm. it, the trailer wasn't very what do you heavy, think? but it seemed maybe six time. or eight horsepower. What do, what do you oh, think? Oh no, no, they would have been Model Ts are 26 horsepower. Oh okay. And the Model A is about a 40 horsepower. Oh okay. So anything other than those would have been more horsepower. Right. And, right. And mm -hmm. uh, they would have been more. They would have been. I, I don't know, 60 horsepower, 80 horsepower, mm -hmm. something in that category. When you think of your childhood, what just jumps out at you? What, what just you can't forget? Well, what really jumps out at me um, is the breaks that I got that most people don't get. I had a wonderful life. Um, me and my wife had a wonderful life. I died right today. I, I had a good life. You know. Fulfilled. I had a good life. That's mm -hmm. right. And uh, and uh, so so nothing really jumps out at me. We I can remember real well staying in New Orleans to for Mardi Gras, and I could go down the street and see Mardi Gras. I was very little, um, and almost lost my arm there in New Orleans. But um, all of those big floats used to be pulled by mules, and they throwed stuff off the floats. And I'm standing there on the side of the street, and a little airplane, the plastic one, hit me and went, and I grabbed, but I was right in front of an iron wheel that was that big around, and I got my arm out just before that wheel, and a policeman happened to be standing there and looked, and he almost had a heart attack, and 
thank God I got my arm. I, you, you know, you are lucky. I would have been a different person right. had I have lost my arm right yes. there, and I could have really. Yep. That, that that's a memorable moment that was very scary. Mm -hmm. um, we stayed at 820 South Claiborne Street, is right where the big sign is for the dome now, and it was a mm -hmm. metal junkyard behind the trailer park, and it was behind a gas station. 820 South Claiborne Street had stuck in my mind. And, and did it, you do medicine shows there? No. Oh, no, okay. We you just, were just traveling. Right the heart of winter. That mm -hmm. was the center of winter. Mm -hmm. And uh, although, and sometimes we did show through the winter, but uh, but but that that would that would be come to uh, to take a month off or something, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I went to Magnolia. I went. To the, the telephone number was Magnolia 8033 at that. At that gas station, you can still and I remember. I went to McDonough Eleven School, and that was the last school I ever went to, and uh, that was in 1946. Mm, so you and were 12 years old. I was born in 34. Yeah, about 12 years and, old. And uh, and the uh, school was, I don't know. There were a little different people than the people along the coast in North Carolina. They were a little, a little bit different people. I liked it better in North Carolina, truthfully. Mm -hmm. um, would you talk a little bit about the medicine show? You talked about selling the medicines. I think so, in some cases you sold them right off the back of the right, trailer, right? Right, right? But then you had animals too. Or well, Daddy got animals, before. and that was uh, that was a, that was a show that he charged to see, and that's when they kind of evolved from medicine shows into into the animal shows. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, and they, the early animals that you had. Talk a little bit about them. Were they were they uh, birds and well, uh, actually, Doc Etling, he was with us for a number of years. That's the man that raised my father that took mm -hmm. him out of the Virginia mountains. Mm -hmm. He had a bird act. He, he uh, trained um, doves. And he had a, he, he turned them loose on a little table there about, I don't know, six feet by four feet or so. And uh, they would do all kinds of things. They'd get on the little little turning thing and they'd mm -hmm. walk up a ladder. And like a little wheel. All kinds and of so things. Mm -hmm. They'd do, do all kinds of things. And then he would turn, uh, he'd make one fly off, and he'd fly around the crowd and come back, and uh, then he'd put them in a box and he'd feed them. And um, but that, that was just a, that was an outside free act kind of. Mm -hmm. And the outside free acts then consisted of my father doing juggling act, balancing acts, and uh, the dummy, Sambo, little black Sambo. Uh, my mother. Did things on the on the chalkboard. Her arts and uh -huh. uh, actually, she'd tear a piece. Actually, it was a piece of paper that she tore off each time and give to the audience. Mm. And then we had a free movies. We had a screen out there, and most of the movies was like news reels, 15 minutes long. So if we put a show on inside and showed some animals, then they'd go out and see a free show. Then we'd sell some candy, and in the candy there was prize. A ticket calling for prizes was hanging up. All the candy was sold. All the prizes would be gone. And uh, then they'd have another show. And then, and and when he when he got the chimp, the way the wrestling and boxing started, when he got the chimp, he was showing Snooky, and Snooky would get to where he didn't want to go in that little box in the corner of the truck over there, so he could show another animal. So somebody in the audience said, "Hey, you want me to help?" you put that monkey in that box? <laughs> Daddy said, yeah, if you, if you think you can put him in there, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it'd be all right. So so the the guy comes in, and it becomes a wrestling match. He's trying to get this monkey in this box, you know. Actually, it's a chimpanzee. I hate, shouldn't call them monkeys. They're, they're man-like apes, and I, mm -hmm. my mother and father you, did not like You know the be difference between monkeys. them, of That's course. right. There's a mm -hmm. difference. And uh, so it turned into, out to be a pretty good show. So then... Uh, so then they kind of featured that on another show. That, Do you think you can put the monkey in the box? So yeah, okay. So then that, it turned out to be a pretty good show. So then <clears throat> Snooky, if he didn't want to do anything, he'd go in the box. Ah, <laughs> he learned. So, uh -huh. then, so then Daddy said, well, okay, this will be a wrestling match. you got to put Snooky's shoulders on the floor. <laughs> well, Snooky didn't want nobody putting his shoulders on the floor. So this went on for months and months, and finally Snooky got big enough, he started nipping fingers. Mm -hmm. So Daddy had to devise a muzzle for him. Mm -hmm. So then uh, if he didn't really want to do anything, he'd roll over on his back. He finally learned out, hey, they're trying to make me do this. Here, I'll do that. <laughs> then he lays on his back, you know. Put his shoulders so then, on the floor so without a fight. They, so then they said, well, you got to sit on Snooky's uh, chest. 
You got to pin it. You got to pin him and sit on his chest. Well, he ain't gonna sit on his chest. He got them two back feet. That's mm -hmm. good. That's just like that. You know, right. there ain't no way you're gonna. Spring you ain't action. no way you're gonna. You ain't gonna get him to lay on the floor and sit on him. You ain't gonna do that. So that that lasted a long, long time, and uh, and the animal learned every trick in the trade uh, and enjoyed it. It was really, it was really something. They, they play rough. They climb up a tree and fall out of a tree from 20 feet up, and do it again and again. It's amazing. They, they Snooky was kind of your buddy, wasn't he? Snooky was, yeah. Yeah. Tell me about that great story that your mother writes about when. Your dad purchased Snooky because he had his eye on him, when didn't he? he? When he, uh, we was in New Orleans, and uh, well, actually we wasn't in New Orleans. We was on a levee outside mm -hmm. of New Orleans under the Huey P. Long Bridge, and uh, we wintered on the levee out there. And uh, you needed it, a new car. Your mo mother thought that you needed a car. Well, they a had. Car. A, I remember the car they had. I don't remember three hundred dollars exactly that they had set aside to yeah. put toward that new car. Well, anyway. I didn't remember that. I didn't remember that exact part. But the, uh, we went to town, and this show in a storefront had a had a chimpanzee, a little chimpanzee. Snooky was about mm -hmm. that big when he got him. Sit, sit about that high when he got him. Mm -hmm. He got to be, of course, a lot bigger later. And uh, I remember when Daddy and Bob Russell and me in the back seat, two door car, went and got Snooky, and Snooky. He was in the back seat. He was in the front seat. He was in the back seat. He was in the front seat. He was in the back seat. He was in the front seat. <laughs> and Daddy brought him home. And uh, <laughs> and uh, the, me and Snooky got along real, real well because we were both about the same age, you know. <laughs> and um, Daddy then would tie Snooky on a long cow chain because there was nobody around on that on the levee out there except some people cutting willows and making ch chairs and. Things like that. They mm -hmm. they put uh, they twist them around and mm -hmm. and nail them together, wire them together, or something. Anyway, they made chairs, made furniture, outside furniture out of them. And uh, Snooky was tied over the levee on the other on the river side to a willow tree. And uh, Daddy was going to town. Daddy and Mama was going to town. They said, "Don't go over the levee. Don't go. Don't go over there." Well, I did go over there. And when I went over the top of the levee. It was very it, steep, it, of course. It, well, it, the levee's made kind of funny. It's made, made on one side, it comes over, and then there's a flat spot, and that's where we park, and then it goes down. And I went over there, and then Snooky's tied down there halfway down. And uh, I fool around, and I get close to the water, and I slide down in the water, holding on to the edge of the bank. And uh, Snooky was tied with the cow chain, and Snooky saw that I was in a little distress. <laughs> So he's got the cow chain to hold on to, so he comes down and he gives me his foot. And uh, I grabbed his foot, and Snooky pulled me up up the little bit of the bank there to get me out of that mud, you know. And uh, I remember it real well, but I didn't tell anybody because I wasn't supposed to be over there. So I didn't tell anybody for like maybe 10 years. I don't know. But long time. It sounds like Snooky might have saved your life. Well, it, it could be, yeah, if I was... I, you know, I don't know what would have happened. I don't. I really don't know what would have happened. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't last long. I mean, I went over there and, <laughs> and slipped, and Snooky saved me. <laughs> yep, that's right. And any other rem remembrances of Snooky or any of the other animals when oh, you were a kid? Lots and lots and lots of memories of Snooky. Uh, lots of memories of Snooky. Daddy had a truck that he drove a little Crosley up into. He'd take the end of the cage off and put the and put the animals in smaller cages and pulled a little Crosley up because they didn't have the driver. Mom and Daddy both drove. Mm -hmm. I wasn't old enough. So the little Crosley was a convertible. So Snooky went everywhere with Daddy, with Daddy and Mama. And, uh, in a cage? No. Oh, sitting no, in the... No, no. Usually, uh, usually had a, uh, a leash, you know, mm -hmm. usually. Collar and leash, uh -huh. uh, and, uh and he wore clothes, and he's in the Crosley, and he starts to have a, he starts, oh God, got to get the pot. Mm -hmm. He had a little pot, see? Mm -hmm. Well, he had to go. Mm -hmm. So they got the car stopped, they got his pants down, they put him on the pot, and he'd been outside playing in the pebbles, and he swallowed a little pebble. 
one little pebble came out. Bing! <laughs> he sat there and he looked, he looked kind of sheepish, you know, and that was it. All the, all the carrying on that we done <laughs> to take care of this little pebble, you know. <laughs> Oh my! That, 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 that was amazing that he was housebroken, oh yeah, basically. Oh yeah. When you got him, yeah, he could take off his own oh, trousers. Snooky was very, Snooky was very good. Snooky would uh, poop in the corner, covered up with sawdust. Sawdust was in the cages. Mm -hmm. If he had a bean can or anything, he'd pee in a bean can. He'd send mm -hmm. it in the other corner. Mm -hmm. But if he got thirsty, he would drink it. Oh my! <laughs> mm -hmm. One of my jobs: be sure that he had plenty he of water, water. And everything all the time. You know. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, did you ever take him to school with you, or did you have any? Mama and Daddy had what they called a school show, and they did put on school shows, and they did take the animals to schools mm -hmm. in the winter time when mm -hmm. we wasn't working out in, mm -hmm. in the, on, on on little towns, um, and uh, showed lots of schools, lots of schools. I don't remember what they charged, but it seems like it was like ten or fifteen cents, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, and. Uh, some of those schools had a lot of kids in them, and mm -hmm. a lot of them uh, got a good show, you know, in, in their auditorium, whatever their auditorium was, you know. Right. And Most kids have playmates when they're kids, so maybe Snooky was your playmate as a kid? Snooky and me was, uh, Snooky and me was, um, usually Snooky was in the cage, but that didn't make any difference in the uh, truck that was built in 46 in New Orleans. Um, there was iron bars, and I used to play with Snooky through the bars, uh, and and I would climb up the ladder outside the bars because he was sometimes in the second cage up. There's a cage at the bottom and a cage at the top, and uh, four there was four cages, two mm -hmm. and two, and they could go from one to the other. There was a sliding door, so you mm. could let them go from one mm -hmm. to the other, mm -hmm. and. Um, he would always let me know if he wanted something. He'd pick up, he saved things. He'd save like a chewing gum wrapper. Show me a chewing gum wrapper. <laughs> he'd save a bottle cap. You know, he'd save something. He'd let me know he wanted something. Yeah, you know, whether, wanted. It be a, whether it be a piece of apple or orange or great, anything, go get me something, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and I'd go get him something. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd, I've done that even mm -hmm. up till the last few years. I was going up here, I'd go, mm -hmm. I'd go to the uh, hamburger joint when, uh, when the hamburger joint was selling them big hamburgers for, for a dollar. Mm -hmm. I'd get 50 hamburgers at a time and take it down there and give him a hamburger. You know, get Snooky still living? No, no, Snooky died early, quite early. I don't know why he died. It was the hottest day of the summer, um, and we were in North Carolina. And he died, and uh, it was he was. I was there watching him most of the day, and he was he was he was upset and like nervous or something. And Duke University autopsied him and said it, it was probably heat frustration because it was the hottest day. But he was in a cage that had was open on both sides, so the breeze mm -hmm. could, just like we are here, the breeze mm -hmm. could blow through mm -hmm. it. And uh, I still got Snooky though. They embalmed him. They took his brains out, they took his stomach out, and they embalmed right. him. Uh -huh. and my mother put him in a vat of formaldehyde for two years and left him in a barn in North Carolina. We had a winter quarters up there hmm. and uh, at the time. And went up there and got him, put him on top of a panel truck and aired him out because that formaldehyde <laughs> smells, you know, let him get aired out good, bringing him to Florida. So I still got Snooky. Aww. That's very sweet. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of other animals, of course, in, in your life. Uh, and in your parents' life, so what were, you know, they were famous for they the chimp farm and They never wanted meat palmer. eaters. They yes. never had meat eaters, and, and they didn't. Uh, snakes didn't appeal to them, but I, but I usually had snakes. Um, but it, like I said earlier on, if you were in North Carolina and you had an armadillo, they had never seen something like that. Mm -hmm. If you go to uh, north a little bit, they never saw. They never saw an alligator. They never saw an armadillo. They never saw some of the southern animals. We had we've had bears. I used to play with a bear all the time. Put a big old leather coat on because he he wouldn't bite you viciously. He'd bite you just hold on like a dog or something, you know. And and you needed something like a leather coat on to to protect your arm while playing with a bear. And uh, so so uh, we did have 
some baboons. We did have some uh, Cody Mundys. Things that they people don't see. You don't, you know, if you went to Wisconsin, you wouldn't take a badger up there to show it to them. You'd take something like an armadillo sure. or something. Sure. Bring a badger to Florida because you yeah, don't see them right. down you here. That's right. Bring a badger down here. Yeah. But we didn't have any badgers because they bite bad. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> so, um, Talk to me about how your family got into the eight family business. Was well, that was, was Snooky the way. The... And Snooky was in that showroom. Daddy wanted uh, to get Snooky, and um, I think Snooky was three hundred dollars, and uh, and Mama had three hundred silver dollars. So they go to the pawn shop in New Orleans, and they said, "Daddy said I want to keep these silver dollars, but I need to borrow three hundred dollars." Um, so the Jewish fellow said, well, uh, okay, I have $300, but what are you going to leave me for security? He said, I'm going to leave you these $300. He says, you have $300, um, and I'm going to give you $300, but what are you going to give me for security? <laughs> it went over and over, back and forth, back and forth. Finally, Daddy told him, look, this is $300, right. but I want to get this $300 you know, back paper because money. Mm -hmm. my uh, mama saved coins, you know. So anyway, they did get the uh, they did get the chimp, and they did go back and get the silver dollar, and they paid him the interest, whatever it was, and uh, eventually, and uh, then uh, so he got Snooky and brought him home. He brought him home in that car, and he was in, like I said, in the front and the back, in the front and the back, and and uh, Daddy was driving, and Bob Russell was sitting on the right side, and I was in the back seat. And your mother described your daddy and Bob as being a train wreck by the time they got home. When well, they got a little a few <laughs> scratches and he torn. Was, well, he was all over the place. Uh, the chimp was all over the place, but he wasn't. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't make any problems. No, you know? he just he was, just, uh, he was being just playful, very and active, excited, very mm -hmm. active. And then, what was the next animal in the chimp family that you got? Do you remember? Well, I think, uh, I don't know whether it was Susie or Joe, Joe yeah. and uh, Susie was a female, and Joe was a male. Joe came from the St. Louis Zoo. He was a trained animal. He could ride a bicycle, tricycle, roller skates, uh, scooters. Every time Daddy went off on a motorbike or anything, one of the, one of the animals sitting behind him on the, on the, on the, Snooky went every place with Daddy, and then when the, Gorillas came along. A gorilla went with Daddy mm -hmm. on the motorcycle, on the uh, any place Daddy went. So they just sat behind him and had That's their right. arms around yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, I suppose they didn't wear helmets. No, they didn't wear helmets. <laughs> they didn't wear helmet either. <laughs> uh, but there wasn't, you know, we wasn't in the in metropolitan areas. We was in the rural areas, real mm -hmm. rural areas. Mm -hmm. We went to places and showed places that didn't have electricity, mm -hmm. a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Daddy would, had his own electricity. Daddy would run a drop cord over and hang it in the store, and the store would have the biggest Friday and Saturday nights they ever had because they had a light bulb hanging in the store. Mm -hmm. um, and we drew, to, we drew a crowd, you know. Mm -hmm. I would take the sound truck and run and and... and try to figure out some type of route to go around and go through the fields where they was working in the fields and all and sit with a sound truck and tell them there's going to be a free show tonight at Fox's Corner, you know, 7 o'clock tonight, Fox's Corner. Well, they all knew what Fox's Corner was or whatever the, mm -hmm. whatever the place was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, then I'd, and then I'd also put up posters and, uh, and make a circle and come back and make another circle and come back and we'd have a crowd that night. Maybe maybe thirty, forty, maybe a hundred and fifty, mm. but we'd have we'd mm -hmm. have a crowd, mm -hmm. and uh, so then they would uh, they would put on a free show, and then they do something on the stage, daddy like a juggling act or a magic act, um, charge to go in and see the animals, come back out to see a free show, sell some candy on the stage with uh, with uh, prizes, mm -hmm. back back. Uh, Back in to see somebody go in the cage and play with one of the chimps. Wrestle one of the chimps. Yeah, one yeah. of the chimps. And, uh, and, and then maybe sell some medicine too? Night. Each show was about 25 cents. And the candy would be 15 two for a quarter or something mm -hmm. like that. And uh, so if there was 100 people out there, Daddy would probably wind up getting $100, $150. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. uh, most likely. I, I, don't, I really don't know. It's just, I, I wasn't a long time ago. Did, did you perform in any of these shows, or was that later in life that you <laughs> Well, I never performed in the shows. Okay. Um, 
well, not even later. I do things, I put on shows, but I never charge for anything that I do. And, um, but everything they did was free too, you know, mm -hmm. so in a way. But, um, no, I made my money 25 cents at a time shooting a stream of water. I made the water games popular oh. a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've been to a carnival, fair, amusement park where they shoot a stream of water at yep. something, yep. clown's mouth or yep. something. Yep. And something either blows up a balloon or something goes up the pole. Well, I waited the one that goes up the pole. I made those popular. Mm -hmm. So I made a lot of them. I sent them out on all the different fairs. I had 11 of them on one show myself. I had 11 wow. 32 foot trailers on a Royal American show. And, uh, and I didn't always get 11 of them up. Actually, I took 12 out one year. I put eight, had six or eight locations that were good. I'd take three or four locations that were not so good, and I'd take any location that was left over that they wanted to fill. And uh, when I came in with the trucks at the end of the night, to load up the games of the merchandise for the next day. Eight out of ten prizes leaving the lot was mine, and I didn't have 10% of the games. I had maybe 5% of the games, but 10%. There'd mm. be one big prize, and then there'd be all these little prizes, one at my place. So you gave out a lot of I prizes, and just the volume of stuff. A lot of merchandise, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. I did. I, I took se I semi loads of merchandise. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had, it took a long time to fill them up each night, you know. I'll I, bet it did. I know what stock in Walmart feels like. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Getting back to the days when you were still with your parents, uh, and still a, a teenager, a child, yeah. um, tell me a little bit about your memories of, of some, especially those that were in the kind of gorilla, uh, um, ape category. Well, and how did your parents then finally end up in Palm Harbor, up in on Alternate 19? Well, the way they wound up in Palm Harbor is 1947. We wintered at the Tropical Bird Monkey Farm. One of the circuses that we were around a little bit said there's a uh, zoo down there that show people are welcome with animals because they use they they have a lot of tourists and if you got some elephants, they put an elephant out in front of the place and this, that, and the other, and it's a help for them. So the Tropical Bird and Monkey Farm at, um, on 79th Street, near the Red Barn Nightclub. Um, Here in Pinellas County? Miami. Oh, in Miami, at 79th okay. 79th Street in Miami, right, right, okay. Northwest. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, uh, they went there to winter, and uh, it was, it worked out, it's perfect, you know, it's perfect. The zoo was there. They knew where to get the food and this, that, and the other, and mm -hmm. the animals were welcome. And uh, it was a good place to spend the winter, you know, for two or three or four months or whatever it might be. And uh, so we wintered there, and we wintered half of um, 1948 there. And uh, we were playing a little spot. You could go out and play a spot too, you know. You, you could come back and you had a place, you had a home base there. If you go out and play a spot, play a little. Like if a little carnival was going to set up over there and mm -hmm. they, you know, in a neighborhood or something, little show or something mm -hmm. with it, then mm -hmm. my parents would take the uh, take the show and go play the spot. And there was uh, we met a uh, band from Connecticut that uh, was a model a truck, little truck, and uh, he said there's a place in Clearwater. The friend of his is building a trailer park, and you're welcome there. Well. He talked Daddy in to come into the trailer park, which was near the Kapok tree. Mm -hmm. When you go off on Highway 60 where it's on the top of the hill, you go to the left on that little road and mm -hmm. back in there there's a trailer mm -hmm. park built mm -hmm. by a man from Michigan. Their name was Sugars. Um, he had a daughter named Betty Sugars. And um, so that, that brought us to Clearwater. Bringing us to Clearwater, I was getting the age where the girls were getting to look good. <laughs> so I uh, met Jean one year and uh, the next year went pretty steady with Jean and, and wound up that uh, I, I, she, she got pregnant. So, 
so I came back and married her. So then when I came back and married her, uh, my parents knew that they needed a place near Clearwater because I was probably going to be here. So they wound up buying the, the little zoo that had three alligators and a couple of monkeys where the chimp farm is at now, mm -hmm. and uh, which is on Alderna 19, mm -hmm. about two miles south, three miles south of Tarpon. Mm -hmm. And um, they had to clear out all the palmetto and everything. So they bought the property. It wasn't a very big piece of property. What year was that? Do you recall, Bob? Boy, it must have been about 1950, 51, 52, mm -hmm. along in there. Mm -hmm. 53, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and um, But it was a zoo for 10 or 15 years before they bought it. So it was found, founded uh, that it was a place that the animals could mm -hmm. be and everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's how that got started, and that's how they come to always come back to the Clearwater area. Mm -hmm. and uh, came back. So they the still show. traveled, and then they would come right, back in the right. wintertime. We had a, had a man that was with us, is Cliff Faust, that was a magician that uh, helped put on the free shows and all, that uh, stayed there and took care of the animals while they were gone. They took most of the animals with them, but there was some animals left. Mm -hmm. The three alligators and three or four, <laughs> eight or ten monkeys or whatever. Mm -hmm. Some came with the purchase of the zoo, yep, I take it. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And they never turned any down when anybody wanted to get rid of animals. They never mm -hmm. turned any down, mm -hmm. unless they were meat eaters. They didn't want any cats. Mm -hmm. And in uh, fact, in Miami, a guy called him and said, I got a bear and a tiger. I got to get rid of them. Daddy said, well, I, I'm interested in the bear, but I really don't want the tiger. He said, well, I'm going to shoot them if you don't come get them. He said, well, don't shoot the bear yet. Daddy went down and got the bear, and sure enough, he had shot the tiger. Oh, my. And uh, mm -hmm. I assume they skin them because the skins are worth a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Daddy kept that bear there for, I don't know, he must have been there 20 years. He died a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He just, he, this was there for forever. Mm -hmm. The bear was a good old bear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. You know, Daddy was kind of funny too, and uh, Daddy, was, Daddy was braver than me. Uh, the bear got out one day. Well, the bear is out there walking around. Well, it's a big bear. It's a big brown bear. Daddy goes and gets a syrup bottle out of the house trailer, comes out, sticks a syrup bottle in their mouth, which they're used to that when they're in the cage. So he was used to it, and he didn't realize there's no cage here or anything. But he had no—he wasn't a mean bear. So Daddy takes him with the bottle, takes him over to the cage, puts his hand through the bars into the cage, closes the cage back up, locks the door. <laughs> I mean, it's that simple when you, it's that simple. When you know how to That's how right. to manipulate an animal. I guess you have to do that once in a while. So bears were big in your life, but what other animals came into your life uh, as you were traveling around with the medicine show? There or was after? a, uh, there was a uh, friend that um, went to war in the 40s, and uh, he met a lot of Australian people. So after the war, he went back over to Australia and lived in the outback. And uh, he actually saw a wild duckbill platypus, which is rare that anybody ever gets to see one. And uh, he brought back a little kangaroo, about so high. Brought it back on a ship? Brought it back on a ship, yeah. He was on a, he took a, he took a ship over and come back on a ship. The one airplanes wasn't as popular then. and. Uh, so it was going to be, he was going to have a boxing kangaroo show. Of course, a kangaroo can only be the owner and the kangaroo boxing because you couldn't box a kangaroo. They mainly come up with their hind legs and kick, mm -hmm. but they put boxing gloves on him and, it, you know, he'd get up there with him and make it like he's boxing. It was a boxing kangaroo show. And uh, on the ship, they actually used him in a movie. I forget which one, on the road, one of the on the road movies or something with uh, with uh, Bob Hope. Bob Hope, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it was one of the movies like that. Mm -hmm. It was just a short scene. It's, mm -hmm. I know the kangaroo was running mm -hmm. around on the ship, mm -hmm. and uh, but he's smart enough not to jump off the ship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so he was with us. When we met him, he was catching rattlesnakes at, um, at the springs up there at, um, and, and um, where the springs boats at started at was, they just sold here recently. Silver, Sp Silver Springs. Uh -huh. Silver Springs, yeah. And he was catching rattlesnakes for Ross Allen. And uh, 
Very he, big guy in snakes. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so he left there when we showed near there and joined us and went on with his, put his little show up, boxing kangaroo, and uh, he never made much money, but uh, he was from Binghamton, New York. And uh, Bob, did any of your uh, friends, people that worked with you, you yourself or your parents, lose, lose any limbs or, or have any serious injuries my, uh, from the animals? My father, uh, my father got bit pretty bad, and real bad, really. But I knew he was going to get bit, and it was his own fault he got bit. Why was and that? every time I got bit, it was Daddy's fault because he said, take the muzzle off of Butch and let him go in the cage there. I said, no, I'm not going to take the muzzle off. He's going to bite you. He said, he won't bite you. Put, take his muzzle off. So I took his muzzle off. He took my hand. He bit my finger. That scar on my finger right mm -hmm. there. I see it. Handed me my hand back and went in the cage. And I locked the door. I, I said, I knew I was going to get <laughs> I, I mean, Tell me about your daddy's boss. injuries, though. They were pretty serious, weren't they? Yeah, they, got, they, they, got, they have one boss, you know, and, and mm -hmm. I, I wasn't a boss. And, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and Susie done the same thing. He told me to open the door and let Susie out. And Susie took my hand and bit me, uh, bit me on my wrist. And I got a little scar here and mm -hmm. here where Susie bit me. No, it's here, I guess, here. Mm. Where Susie took my hand, bit me, and turned mm -hmm. it loose and mm -hmm. went out the cage. You know, <laughs> Susie could be turned loose. Most of them could be turned loose, but Susie was a female. She she wouldn't go anywhere. Um, my father, it was uh, we was on a little we was in I think in Heidelberg, Mississippi, showing with a little carnival, and uh, my father didn't have a lot of patience. And my mother wasn't back, and it was time to open the show. It was about six thirty in the evening, and. Uh, he had left Susie and Joe, uh, male and female, in a big cage where they'd done the performance at. And, uh, and he went in to put, put them into little cages, and Joe didn't go into, into cage. So what usually convinces them to do something is a blank gun. The blank gun doesn't do anything except make a loud noise, but it will burn you if it's real close. And uh, he he used the blank gun outside, and he didn't give him any time. And I said to myself, "Don't go in there now." And he went right in and opened the door. And uh, of course, Joe was still his hair was still standing up and everything, and I. He, you got to wait till they settle down. You got to wait till talk to them, get everything okay. Okay, now we're all right, you know. And and Daddy didn't have the patience, and uh, so Daddy opened this one door, and then the other smaller door, which is this high. This is a six foot high door. This is a three foot door for him to come in and go in his cage. Well, he came over the cage. Daddy put his hand down. He bit those two fingers off. He put this hand down to get that hand out of his mouth, and he bit that hand in two. And the two fingers were left laying there, and he leaned against the door to, to keep the animal in the big cage. Well, that makes a hazard for me because we got to move the show, you know. Saturday night, it's all over. So the helper outside, which did something that I wouldn't have done, he went in the, the, at the safety door here to where my father was at, leaning against the door, and then locked that door to get my father out. Well, it's good he did. I went underneath the truck, and I had an iron bar where I cleaned the cages out. There's some bars across there when the cages went out into a garbage can underneath. And I went up through that and done like that between Joe and Daddy. And, uh, but it didn't mean anything. One of the fingers fell through that hole. One of them fell right there at the hole. Closed the door. Took Daddy to the hospital. Now I got two chimps in a big cage mm -hmm. with with the with the runway and the other four cages here with the doors that they could have opened that had more chimps in it. They didn't, and uh, this door is closed. He didn't close the door where where the cage was at. He came back through the runway and closed the second door. There's two doors and. Uh, so then I, uh, I had to open the show up that night, and I, and I thought people that paid to go in and see the chimp had just bit the, my father's fingers off. I had my father's fingers there. 
and uh, they take him to the, bur the, the hospital, and he... Uh, um, he had to have surgery that yeah, night, and they it was rough. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's, there's a long story in there, but I'll leave that out. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and then he comes back. I, I get the show moved. I get him in the little cage and everything, and I get the show moved. And when Daddy comes back then, uh, I don't know what it was, maybe five days later, I don't know, uh, the chimp and him made up. The chimp was making up. And uh, so he goes in and handles the chimp again because he's settled down. Everything's all right now. So it's, it's amazing. They're, they're very much like people. Mm -hmm. You know, when somebody gets mm -hmm. mad, you got to... Mm -hmm. Back off. back off a little bit, yeah. you know, back off a little bit. And how old big how big was Joe? How old was Joe he? Joe was probably was a hundred pound chimp and Joe mm -hmm. had been had, had been uh, with the uh, St. Louis Zoo and is was one of the performers, could ride a bicycle, tricycle, roller skates, uh, stand on his front hands, walk around and and done many tricks like that, which which um, which was uh, he was a smart chimp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, clever. But they but when a chimp gets in there like teenagers, they're they're not as predictable, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, as a as a child, what did you think you wanted to be when you grew up? Did you want to do what your mom and dad did? I didn't. Did I, you... I, I, no, I didn't want to do what they did. I knew I didn't want to do exactly what they did, but I didn't. I really can't put my finger on anything that I really wanted to do. They asked me a lot of times, you know, do you would you like to go to uh, one of these. Uh, schools that, uh, which one is it there that makes the soldiers and all? I, I didn't, mm -hmm. I like didn't, West Point or something yeah, like that? you want to uh -huh. do something like that? No, I, that, that was not my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. My cup of tea was always tinkering and building something. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it wound up being the right move mm -hmm. because I wound up making the water games and I made a lot of them. And so I you stayed well. in the amusement field, but it yeah. just was a different yeah. fix on what your parents had I made had done. some other games, too. I made a lot of other games that, uh, that were successful for me. I made a lot of games that was not successful. I had shooting galleries. I had BB galleries. I had short range and long range. And I had, mm -hmm. I had a go-kart, a, a portable go-kart track. And I, I, I made a lot of things that wasn't successful. I made The first thing that I made was a thing that you hit and ring the bell. And I was in a little town of... Uh, in Pennsylvania, Coppel or New Galilee, no, that's uh, where the green man was at. Um, Homer or Climber. I was in Homer and then we went to Climber or Climber and then to Homer. Anyway, there was a, a blacksmith shop there and the guy wasn't busy. And I s went over and I said, do you, you want to build something for me? I know exactly what I want and I'll get you the parts you need. He said, yeah, I'll be glad to. So starting on Monday, evening we started a high striker a thing that you hit and ring the bell mm -hmm. well I went to Indiana 20 miles or so up the road to Indiana Pennsylvania to uh, Jimmy Stewart's daddy's hardware store the movie star and biggest hardware store I ever saw in my life and I bought a ladder that extended and we took that ladder and we brought it together at the top but fixed it so it could come apart so I could load it I got the track there I got some other parts there Jimmy Stewart's hardware store brought it back to the and showed him what I wanted to make for a thing where they hit and ring the bell and we got a piece of wood and when I went to the junkyard and coal mine junkyard and got out of one of the coal cars I got a bell to put on top and he made me a wooden hammer and I had it up Saturday night mm -hmm. and the wife took in like eight dollars but I didn't have any paint on it, no signs, I had no prizes so I went to the drugstore and got some candy bars or something and mm -hmm. uh, from that, from that we made more money than I had ever made in my life. Uh, so with uh, with that, I came in with uh, I, I don't know, like three or four thousand dollars in my pocket, where I was used to coming in with three or four, five hundred or so. Mm -hmm. And then the next year, I, well, I joined the straight shows. I joined. I went about three shows, and I wound up with the straight shows. And uh, it's a railroad show. It's still in the business today. The winter's over in Orlando, and it's uh, rail, the last railroad show on the, on, on the carnival mm -hmm. on the, in the business. Mm -hmm. And I stayed with them for nine years. And mm -hmm. from that high strikers, I built other things in the wintertime and, and, and took them with the show and, and wound up doing very well. And then mm -hmm. I changed shows. After being with them nine years, I changed and went to the Royal American Shows, which was a bigger carnival and a better route. 
but bigger jumps, and it was also a railroad show. Bigger jumps, what does that mean? Well, I used to leave here with the Royal, and we had four 1,000 mile jumps. And that's a lot to take 10, 12 trucks and have all the drivers and everything and make sure mm -hmm. everything gets there on time. And I did it for over 20 years. Everything was there on time to get open with every spot. So tell me, like, where would those four places be? Where would those four, four, places, four no, sites? There wasn't four. It was, we'd leave here, we'd play the Tampa Fair, we'd leave the Tampa Fair, and we'd leave about May. We would go to, to Memphis Con Carnival, uh, Cotton Carnival. We'd go to St. Louis to a seal spot in a bad area. We stayed there t two weeks. Then we jumped from there to um, Davenport, to Winnipeg, Manitoba, to Calgary Stampede, big spot, Edmonton, Alberta, Regina, Saskatchewan, Milwaukee, St. Paul, Topeka, Hutchinson, Little Rock, Jackson, Shreveport, and get home at Halloween about this time of year. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that, in that, and all that moves, there's four, four jumps that's close to a thousand miles. Mm -hmm. Well, from Calgary to uh, from uh, Winnipeg to Calgary is almost a thousand, four hundred miles up to mm -hmm. Edmonton. Mm -hmm. uh, from Regina to Milwaukee is almost a thousand. Mm -hmm. um, coming home was a thousand. From Shreveport, close right. to a thousand. Right. And uh, that was a good route, though. Good mm -hmm. route. Mm -hmm. Good route. And once mm -hmm. a person does that. It's in your blood. It's in your blood. Boy, <laughs> they I say it. that. I yeah, oh man, I hate, I hate, hated not to be able to go out the next season. But the show mm -hmm. lost its route, mm -hmm. and uh, but one by one they lost all their good spots, and, mm -hmm. and it was all over. And, uh, but it sounded like you had both a creative side and wanting to build things and bring forward new I ideas still do of that. things. I still build things. Do I you? I still tinker around with things. A lot of things. Mm -hmm. In fact, when we get through talking, I'm going to go building a set of steps on the back of a camper I bought that didn't have the correct steps on it when it came left the factory for old people to get in and out. You know, <laughs> I mean, they're little steps that wide and 14 inches high and stuff right. like that. You know. Well, what I was going to say, Bob, is that you were also clearly a businessman who knew how to, uh, well, you know, well, bring wife, this creative wife, side all the way. I, I got to the third grade. The wife got to the seventh grade. Um, and uh, so she could take care of the book work, kind of, you know. There was a lot of book work that had to be taken care of that you don't even realize. To get all them trucks through all them states legal is a pain. And mm -hmm. it's way worse now than it was then. And, um, and she, she, was able to, uh, she was able to do all that. And um, she was a very, 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 very good wife. She was a good partner. Mm -hmm. She'd come out at 10, 11 o'clock at night and help me hold a piece up on the side of the trailer when I was putting a trailer together mm -hmm. to put a game in, you know. And, uh, hmm. and raised uh, two kids and uh, mm -hmm. kept a good house and, uh, and then drove one of the trucks, pulled one of the trailers, and, and every time a kid got married, we had another driver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's one way to look at it, that's absolutely, right. <laughs> absolutely. Um, do you remember any sporting events that you particularly enjoy? Is there anything that you like as far as I sports like to goes? I go scuba diving. Do you? I like to. I've been out all. I've been up and down this coast. I went. To, I went to the Australian Reef. I went to the Cayman Islands. I like mm -hmm. to go. I like to go scuba diving. But I haven't been in a number of years because they've been in my heart fourteen times. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Doctor Williamson, Morton Plant Hospital. Mm-hmm. So he's he telling done, you to take it he easy. He done thirteen up, I think, and then yes. this last one was done by somebody else, but mm -hmm. he was there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I just don't. Just don't get in the water like I used to, and it, and mm -hmm. too, my wife going into the Alzheimer's home changed a lot of, mm -hmm. changed everything really, mm -hmm. changed everything. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. the same as it mm -hmm. used to be at all. Yeah, but uh, I understand. Do you, how did you spend holidays? Were holidays times that you could take a vacation, like Christmas time or Fourth of July, or was those working? Well, when times? we got in, when we got in, uh, when me and the wife got home at uh, Halloween, uh, about about this time of year. Um, we would take two or three weeks off. We'd go places. Um, you know, we get in the car and drive out to Yellowstone and drive up to whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, we went down that. I've been I've been on the West Coast Highway along the coast three or four times, all the way to the end of the Baja one time. Went down on the Mexican train ride, put the motorhome on a train, lived on a train, in the motorhome for seven or eight days. 
putting you on a different siding each night as you got there. And then they'd tell you, the, the uh, wagon master would tell you where to go eat, where the good water was at, where, where to stay out of, and this, that, and the other, and tell you what you're going to see tomorrow as we're riding along. And you're all in, sitting in your motorhomes, and it's going like this, and the one in front of you is going <laughs> like that, just like this, and just like that. Clickety click, clickety click, clickety click. Take you to the next little town or siding or whatever. Went through the Copper Canyon Mountains, mm -hmm. went through 98 tunnels, some of them over a mile long. Not, mm -hmm. not mountains that's like this, mountains that sheer up and down. Mm -hmm. At one place it stopped. I got out of the motorhome. I went around behind. I was pulling the Grand Cherokee. It was on the same flat car. I took up the whole flat car. Looked down in the river down there. The railroad ties are sticking out that much over nothing. The rock starts here where the train is at. Nothing. And down in the river down there, 1,500 feet below me, there's flat cars just like I'm standing on. Oh, my on. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had some second thoughts about that. What am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, it makes you feel kind of funny. It does. They don't do it anymore. It changed hands, and they was afraid of lawsuits should something happen. Mm -hmm. So they stopped doing the, mm -hmm. the, the house trailers and campers on, mm -hmm. on trains. Mm -hmm. But you can still take the train trip. And we went out to the end of the railroad tracks there, and that was... Uh, the Sea of Cortez, and we drove down to Mazzalan. We caught a ferry boat there. I watched Marty grow in Mazzalan for one year. Took the ferry boat over to the end of the Baja and then drove out up the uh, coastal highway mm -hmm. into uh, California and uh, mm -hmm. stayed at the trailer park there. And that was the end of the about a 22 day deal total, everything mm -hmm. on that trip. It was mm -hmm. a good trip. And uh, so I've been, I've been up and down that coastal highway out there in cars and then motorhomes and mm -hmm. I don't pull trailers very often. So. Yeah, I understand that. Did you um, did you ever go to church? Went to church about the number of times. I'll tell mm -hmm. you the experiences I had in church. Mm -hmm. Staying at my aunt's house in Virginia, where the house I was born in, she gave me 10 or 15 cents to put in a hat and we went to church. Well, the church wasn't kind of what I expected because it happened to be a funeral. Oh. And a whole bunch of kids was there and squalling and crying and carrying on because I don't know whether it was their daddy or their mama, but one of them was in the coffin. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't something that made me feel very happy. So the next year, I'm back up there at my aunt's house, which which they'd take me there and let me, because I got some cousins and all there, you know. We go to the same church, the same kids are squalling and hollering and carrying on because mama now, it was daddy, now it's mama or vice versa. So that was my experience in that church. Now I go back to that church because the cemetery is out there with my relatives and all, mm -hmm. and I put a little show on there in the hall for them once in a while. Then I went to church in Clearwater I went to church someplace else, and it was Sunday school, and I was little. And they asked me to read this. Well, I couldn't read it, and they all made fun of me. And I said, you know, they're not going to be bothered with me anymore. A cruel experience. <laughs> A cruel experience. And that's my experience in the churches. <laughs> not good. Not good at all. Uh, I, w I lived uh, up near where the chimp farm was, yeah. the Noel chimp farm, and I met your mother. I yeah. never met your dad. What year did your dad pass? You know? You know, I should know exactly, but I don't know exactly. Um, he's buried. Um, uh, I know where he's buried. Was it in the 60s? It's, I was playing at Dallas Fair at the time, and I drove back for the funeral. And... Uh, I haven't been to the Dallas Fair in probably 15 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. I think okay. Daddy was 82, I think. Okay. Sure. I think he was born in, well, he got married in 1920, I think, and he would about, was about 19 or so when he got married. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I guess so. he would be 100 years old if he was living. Uh huh. And what about your mom? When, when she, did she, she was about four years later. Uh huh. And, uh, I was here when she they passed were, away. They were an amazing pair. Yeah. yeah. He couldn't. Well, I tell you, I, I couldn't have, uh, myself, I couldn't have had a better wife than I had. I, I've, mm -hmm. I've got a 
She doesn't know me now. She said, I go down there just about every day. I've missed one day in 10 now, mm. which was two days ago. And mm -hmm. uh, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll see her before the day's over. Mm -hmm. And uh, So you had a good good, good parents life. and a good, good wife. Good and life. Yeah, good, good, wife. good sons, I know that. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yep. Both of them still married to the same. Uh, mm -hmm. One of them married now 45 years. Mm. We've been married 63 years, me and the wow. wife. Wow, wow. And uh, so... Um, what legacy do you think your family leaves in Pinellas County because of the... Of the well, I, I think that my, my and family, and my, I think my family so far, uh, uh, you know, what I've got of my own family and my mother and father, I think that um, I know they gave my mother and father the key to Tarpon Springs one time, so they, uh, they must have thought it was all right. Um, and I think that... Uh, I think that... Uh, Everybody, uh, not many bad things can be said, if any. Right. About they were certainly good stewards of the animals. They uh, loved the animals and took good yeah, care of them. They did take sure. care of the animals well. Mm -hmm. They actually took care of the animals better than they took care of me and sister. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's really. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, there's more pictures by far of the animals than there is of me and sister. Mm. You know, by well, far. they got some nice ones of you, though. Yeah. I, I like that, too. You know, Albert Einstein said, if we look deep into nature, then we will understand everything better. Yeah. You think that's true? Uh, yeah, I do. I think, that, uh, I think that everything is related on Earth. I think everything, even the trees mm -hmm. and people, are related. I really believe that. Uh, the trees, uh, the pine trees, can set up a... Uh, a signal to the others when they get a bug, and the others then fight the bug off. Um, that's been proven. Um, there's things that's just beyond imagination that uh, that you can read about. And or see. certainly even an explanation. You can't explain some things, they just are. I also believe in the Constitution of the United States, too. Mm -hmm. I believe the Constitution should be adhered to. Yes. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very strong on that. Uh, your, your parents wrote this wonderful, or your mother actually wrote this wonderful book. It started at, she started writing, I guess, at the, at the St. Petersburg Junior College in Tarpon Springs, got, got some help from one of the professors who encouraged be, her to write. Sure. Uh, but it's such a great book, The History of the Knowles Our Gorilla Show. Yep. And you should be very proud of that because mom did a great job of writing. It's a very charming book and tells lots of good stories, yeah, just like you do. Uh, the pictures on the back there, you, that's my father with Tommy the gorilla. Mm -hmm. That, uh, you'll you probably never see something like that again, you know? And it, and you used to be able to go into that zoo and Tommy would be tied out there, yep. tied him around his wrist or something. You can't yep. tie him or can't put a collar right. on him because right. he'll slide it off their head. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, he was tied around his wrist sometime. Was, did he have an ankle? Well, sometimes it's put around his ankle. I don't think so. <laughs> Anyway, Bob, you, you have been a great storyteller. Thank you so much for being a part of this uh, delightful show because it means a lot to us to learn about your interesting life. Yeah. Well, I didn't know whether you, uh, whether you wanted um, anything else or not. Of course, there's, um, I carry something in my pocket. Oh, well, let's you see what like you carry. You yeah. Think you're running out of time. No, or not? no, I think we're good. Let's let's see what you got in your pocket. I bet you have some kind of magic thing because I my do. grandsons tell me about the magic you I do. do. That's why they wanted to I be have, here. Uh, I have uh, the miser's dream. Do you know what a miser is? Yes. What is a miser? A miser is one that saves all of his money and doesn't give any of it away. You got the camera on this good? This, mm -hmm. I have an empty hand and I have an empty hand mm -hmm. and I have a few dollars. Mm -hmm. That's one, two, three, four, five. How many did you count? Five. I swapped in, so you see both ends now and all mm -hmm. the way around. Is that mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Is that real? Mm -hmm. Three, four, and one's five. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. If you're taking double your money, I'd it like looks to like double more. My money. Yeah. It does look like but more when you double it, so I double it over mm -hmm. and over and over. Mm -hmm. See, when it double it over and over, it starts looking better and better. Oh, right? see, that's wow. That's one, two, three, four, five. And now, if you notice, they're all $100 bills. Yes. And that's real and spendable. Bob, I have five $1 bills in my wallet. Could you do that for me? Give them to me, and I take and work with them, and the next time I see you, I'll tell you a story. 
Okay, that's good. That's good. I take and give these to my girlfriend or wife. My uh -huh. wife, when she was here, she right. hasn't been here in three and a half years. Right. She takes them down to Walmart. She always brings me back about oh my $5. Gosh. <laughs> oh, that's my grandsons who love your magic and all the kids in the neighborhood do. You're, you're a clever guy. Thanks a lot, Bob. Yep, I do that out there sometimes at sunsets. I know, it's I know. They the, tell me you know, about it. People. Indeed. If I know somebody's out there that wants to see it, I usually go out there. Thank try you. To.